Hey there, NFL football fans. This is the lovely Rita Sanchez, a.k.a. your option football champ for the 2023 NFL season. I'm inviting you to join us for the 2024 option, where we pick the winning teams for each week's matchups and compete against each other to see whose picks reign supreme. Are you in? Head over to CBS Sports and search for the Option 2024 League or hit the link in the bio on the Fade Route socials and join today. It's for free. Pick a witty name, some winning teams, and I'll see you out there for week one. Coming at you from the AO Studios, it's the Fade Route with DNZ. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Powered by Riverside FM. Coming at you live from the AO Studio. AO. It's the fade route with D and Z. I am D. We got a great show for you tonight. The injury bug has hit the NBA. The Jets, Cowboys, Bears, and Giants are bad. And the Chiefs and Ravens appear to be powerhouses in the AFC. But we begin today's show with the Steelers beating the Commies 28 to 27. It was a boxing match between two formidable opponents. That ended with a gut-wrenching fourth down play where the commies rookie, Johnny Newton, fell victim to the oldest trick in the book, the hard count. So the Steelers moved to 7-2. They haven't played any divisional games yet. But are the Steelers for real? I believe I had them being for real in the beginning of the season. Just want to put that out there. What I find insane is that we're going into week 11 and they have yet to play a division opponent. Yeah. You, you, yeah, they got a pretty tough schedule. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you have... You got to get there. Yeah, know. yeah. Like, I mean, I, I wish I could get that. You know, like built up all this momentum, all this confidence. Good for you guys. Good for you. I mean... In the next few weeks, you have Ravens, Browns, Bengals, Browns, Eagles, Ravens, a showdown with the Chiefs on Christmas Day, and then you end the season with the Bengals. So that is not an easy schedule by any sense of the imagination. So the Steelers had to, had to, had to strike while the iron's hot. They had to get off to this hot start. And... You know, it was a head-scratcher when they went to Russ after Justin Fields got them going. And it's proven to work. You know, they're averaging 10 more points a game with Russ than they do with Justin Fields. How you like my guy, Mike Williams? I told you he was going to fit in great there. Well, he's fitting in great there because Russ is actually delivering him the football. And it was on the red line. It was on the red line. It was on, it was the it was the the deep ball, the moon ball, that Mike Williams is known for, and that's what he does. So great. He did more. He did Mike. more in you know Pittsburgh what? than he did in New York in a span of four quarters. Yeah, but you know what? Hats off to Mike Williams for when Aaron Rodgers gave him shit for not running the correct route. He didn't say anything negative. Just shook his head and was like, you know, I gotta play better, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, when they asked him if there was any problems with Aaron Rodgers, he's like, nope, everything's fine. And now he goes to Pittsburgh and boom. Well, he's a pro. What, what can you say? He's a pro. He's a pro. He's a pro. Because it could have, you know what? He really could have went after him. Mr. Aaron Rodgers, who was 15 for 32 with 185 yards passing against the Cardinals. In a game, the Jets were favored by one and a half. We uh, can't figure that shit out. We'll get to Mr. Cayenne Pepper and Water in a second, but you know this was a, a this was a, a boxing match. It's definitely a good way to it's a good way to describe it. And the Steelers they outpunched. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. Now they did get outpassed by Jaden Daniels, but ultimately Jaden Daniels put didn't put the ball in the end zone. Russ did three times. Now, 
Austin Eckler got into the end zone twice, but the commies only had 60 rushing yards. So the the Steelers defense is for real. We, we kind of knew that the Steelers defense was going to be for real. It's the passing game. We knew the run game. We knew Warren and Harris. We knew the defense. We had questions about the passing game. And that was from... It was more like Denver Russ, right? Is Denver Russ going to show up? Is Seattle Russ going to show up? Is Wisconsin Russ going to show up? Is uh, New York Yankee Russ going to show up? Like, who were you going to get when you brought this guy in? And it was the same thing with Justin Fields. Were you going to get Ohio State Justin Fields? Or were you going to get the guy that was getting scraped off of Soldier Field? Like, what were you going to get? And this is what Mike Tomlin does. We talked about culture last week, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers have a culture and it starts at the top with Mike Tomlin. And if you don't buy in, you're not around very long. Ask ask Deontay Johnson about that. Deontay Johnson, who just got roasted by Coach Tomlin in his press conference about how there are better people who figure into their offense a lot more that we need to worry about. And that's who we're going to talk about. So just like... (laughs) Boom, roasted, as Michael Scott once said. But the Steelers are absolutely for real. And they are absolutely for real. If they play like this, if if Russ has commanded the offense, that is that that is for real, man. That is absolutely for real. Now, what are you gonna get from other guys not named Fryermuth and not named Mike Williams? Because, yeah, George Pickens caught a touchdown pass, but he also really gave up on Russ's pick to where he initiated contact with with the defender who didn't have the ball. It it was very weird what what, uh, George Pickens decided to do when it was evident that he wasn't going to be able to uh, either tackle the defender who, who intercepted Russ or knock the ball down himself. So it's very interesting to see what's going to happen from there. But, you know, the, the commies, they played a hell of a game. They played their asses off. And at the end, you were still within a down of getting the ball back. But it's the oldest trick in the book. Like you said, hard count. Fourth, There's no way in hell Mike Tomlin was snapping that ball. You know that. I know that. Everybody in freaking everybody at FedEx Field knew that. The coaches knew that. Deep down, Johnny Newton knew it, and he couldn't stop himself from doing it. That's the hard count, right? Who has the best hard counts? Eli Manning had a great hard count. Aaron Rodgers has a great hard count. Russ has a good hard. Count. Aaron Rodgers is good at something. Well, he was. I don't. I, he doesn't oh. use the hard count because he's never in that position with the Jets. He, he hasn't been in that. <laughs> I'm sure that he still can do it. It's possible. But they, they like we don't need to get off to sack your ass. Nah, we're all right. We are all right. We're all right, man. You do but you. this schedule is going to be brutal moving forward. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. Like you have, we, we already went over it. Plus, plus the Eagles, plus the Chiefs. There, there is a serious, there is a serious chance here that they either ride high or they only win two games it is very possible because that division is no joke and they're out of division opponents left for the season are no joke and you're chasing buffalo you're chasing kansas city you have big time aspirations and you know now's the time but you know the confidence you have to be very confident in what you've seen if you're a steelers fan you got to be riding high how can you not be yeah, I mean, for me, I think, listen, they started the year with Justin Fields and they were playing okay, right? I mean, I don't think he, I think I'm pretty sure he was undefeated, yeah. right? Or he lost a, I think he lost one game, I think. Two games. We lost one yeah. game, right? Um, and the defense has been pretty healthy um, and TJ's playing very well. We're really going to find out a lot about them this week when Baltimore comes to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a, you, you always call it the black and blue division. 
And the thing that the thing that I think was impressive what the Steelers did this past weekend is they won a close game. You know, uh, it was a back and forth affair. Uh, I think being able to hang in there and beat you know Jaden Daniels, who's been really changing things for, for Washington this year. But I'm curious on how they're going to play against Lamar and play against Derrick Henry after the game that they just had against the Bengals. Um, so I think the stretch that the Steelers are about to go through, we're going to find out who they are. And they're going to find out who they are. Because these games could be tough enough where they prepare them for a playoff run. Mm-hmm. Right, or it could be detrimental to them where Russ gets exposed, where they have a tough time running the ball, or they're not able to get off the field on third down. Well, what we know about the well, let's just deal with the matchup immediately at hand is the Raven, Ravens and the Steelers. The Ravens don't pass protect; they don't they don't pass defend very well. No, they really no. don't. So that's what I'm saying. Like. Russ has a real opportunity here to shine bright. And he's got some, you know, Mike Williams and he's got George Pickens. They got Fremuth. They've got players. They're not, I wouldn't call them A-level players. They're a solid B, but a solid B um, that doesn't make mistakes and plays good defense could beat you. Absolutely. Could beat you. But we go into... The two AFC powerhouses continued their winning ways with narrow escapes. We spoke about the Ravens survived the Bengals 35-34. The Ravens were down 21-7 in the third quarter and came back to win that game on a failed two-point attempt. And the Chiefs made it to the to 9-0, beating the Broncos 16-14 on a blocked field goal attempt at the gun. I watched that game live. So did the Ravens and the Chiefs win these games? Or, you know, are there cracks in the foundation that each team should be worried about? Well, you had a little bit of luck if you're the Bengals, right? You, you had a, you had a chance to get there. You had a little bad luck, I should say, because you had two calls that didn't go your way. And then what the hell are you doing? What kind of stupid nonsensical decision do you make you are one point down right kick the field goal uh, kick the extra point rather kick the extra point go to overtime take it instead you decide we're gonna go for the jugular we're gonna go and we're gonna go for two and yeah that's <laughs> To say, to say that's a low percentage play is an understatement. You have no wiggle room. Yeah, it's a, it's fantastic, but you are literally tight roping without a net there. Like that is a boneheaded decision if you are the Cincinnati Bengals. So, yes, while you have to be you have to be pleased with the Ravens' performance, right? You know. Lamar Jackson almost threw for 300. He had four touchdowns. Derrick Henry had another one on the ground. Like, you have to be concerned about the defense. You're letting up 34 to friggin' Joe Burrow. How do you think? How do you think uh, Jamar Chase feels after having over 200 yards uh, and three touchdowns and losing the oh game? Oh God! He had 264 yards receiving on 11 receptions. They could not fucking find him in a closet over the weekend. So, yeah, no. Like, they had 421 passing yards as a team. Somebody cover Chase. Yeah. Where the yeah. fuck is So, Joe Burrow threw for 421 passing yards. And Jamar Chase accounted for 264 of them. Yeah. And they lost. But they but Chase Brown fucking fumbling the football. Giving yeah. Yeah ball on their own 30 that gets them within a touchdown it does and it's just downhill from there i mean lamar played amazing he played he did derrick henry did a great job that that defense is suspect the defense is he did enough 
he did enough. Had a pedestrian day for himself. But he did enough. Yeah, 68 yards and a touchdown. He scored a touchdown. I think it's the 14th straight game he scored a touchdown. Oh, no. It's 10 straight games with a touchdown. But I think going back to last year, it's 14. 14 touchdowns on the season, I think he has. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to the Ravens, I think it's show, I mean, for them, I think it's about resolve, mm-hmm. right? Things weren't going great. Things weren't going right. He still found a way to win the game. And for the Bengals, it's like, God, what more do we have to do? I guess I guess Zach Taylor's going to lose his job because they're not performing very well. As as good as Joe Burrow is and as good as all their, their uh, specialty players are, they're losing games. They're not winning games. What are, they, what are the Bengals going to... I actually, this is a probably a good bet. Is like, what do the Bengals need to do to make the playoffs, right? Because you have to think that they're good enough to make the playoffs, right? What's their upcoming schedule? Uh, let's take a look. They got the Chargers. Uh, they got the Steelers. Uh, uh, Cowboys. Okay. Titans. Wait. This might see. Bengals might not be easy. Steelers might not be easy. Let's see what the odds are. I got to think they're going to make the playoffs. They're too good. They they have too much talent not to make the playoffs. But, God, can they play any fucking defense? For God, they used to say that guy, Lou Amarillo, the defensive coordinator mm-hmm. of the Bengals, was, like, going to be a next head coach. He can't stop a nosebleed, man. Like, what the hell is going on? Staten Island zone, Lou Anarumo. But, yeah, is that's a problem. Really? They've regressed since they went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, Joe Burrow got hurt, but... And you know what, Z? They were playing the Ravens tough for two mm-hmm. quarters. Like, giving them a problem. Like, they were swarming Lamar. They were swarming Derrick Henry. They were rallying to the football. And you're like, oh, man. Like, they're they're they're, they're, they're turning a page tonight. Right now, they're turning the page tonight. And then Chase Brown. Chase Brown fumbles. Sue a touchdown. We don't get it. We go three down. And then it just, it just, it should have never got, it should have never got to where it went. And, um, I don't know. But it's boneheaded. It's completely boneheaded. But if you want to talk, I mean, let's look at the flip side of that coin. The yeah. Chiefs didn't do much offensively, right? They didn't, they, they didn't really light the world on fire. And Denver, Denver has a, has the number one defense. in the NFL. But they did just enough to win. 266 and a touchdown for Mahomes. I mean, they got nothing going on the ground. Absolutely nothing. How impressed are you with Bo Nix? Bo Nix is a solid player. Right? For an old man? Mm-hmm. So. How, I mean, that's impressive for him to go into Kansas City and play as well as he did, yeah. right? He he doesn't look like a He's player. poised beyond his years. He is. 215 yards passing. He only had eight incompletions and no turnovers. That's pretty damn special. But you know what? That's also credited to Sean Payton. Sean Payton is coaching him up. How about this? Nick Bolton and Bo Nix are the same age, but Bo Nix is a rookie, <laughs> and Nick Bolton's going on year four. How about I that? mean, you kind of have to, like, kinda sometimes you have to throw that shit out the window. You remember when Chris Winkie played for the Carolina Panthers? He was 29. Yeah. Brandon Whedon was, what, 31? Like he, it, some of the players had jocks older than Brandon Whedon. Maybe this is, but maybe this is a good idea. Maybe this is how you know we um, we bring NFL Europe back. Maybe this is how we get you know football in Europe. You know these quarterbacks and other players who are who are going to be on the bench to start in college could could play in Europe for a couple of years, not lose college eligibility, and then come back over and step into starting roles. Well, I mean you. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. Now, you also had the... the he's not losing eligibility. He's like, you know, giving them that... Between red shirts and the COVID exemption, that's what happened. That's the reason why you had this situation. That's why you had a guy like JT Daniels play for like eight fucking teams. Like, at that point, was he going for his doctorate? Like, is he like, is he yeah. fucking Scotty Reynolds? Scotty Reynolds... But it helped him. I mean, look, and look who he's starting over. He's starting over Jared Sidham and he's starting over Zach Yes. Yeah. I mean, the bar's kind of low, <laughs> but, um, you know, like, but, but with the, the chiefs, they did just enough, just enough to win. And that's all good teams need to do. It doesn't matter by how many, 
It doesn't matter if you win by one or by 31. What's most important is that you win the game. You talked about battle tested with the Ravens. The Chiefs are battle tested too, and they they're not drawing a cupcake next week. Like it's just get it's. They gotta go to yeah, Buffalo. yeah. So this and, and they already played out of their norm because they played at a one o'clock Eastern, which they never play one o'clock. I, I was very, I was very surprised that they were scheduled for one o'clock Eastern on Sunday. It's like usually they're the four o'clock game. It was just really bizarre, but the Chiefs are going to get everybody's best shot. They do get everybody's best shot. They've weathered the storm. Now, Kelsey needs to come through. D-Hop needs to come through. The guys that you need to come through need to come through. Kareem Hunt cannot be your leading receiver. If Kareem Hunt is your leading receiver, there's a problem. That's so strange. You have DeAndre Hopkins, and you have these these a plethora of tight ends to throw, to, to throw to. And if I recall, he didn't do much on the ground. 35 yards. Like, you know, there's brought Denver tip really went in there with a blueprint. Yeah. They went in with a game plan and how we're going to stop the fucking Chiefs today. Guys. And they almost did Here's it. How we're going to stop the Chiefs today, guys. I got so and maybe and Sean McDermott's a smart guy. So maybe he watches this film and he he puts that in some of his players and they're able to get it done. But I thought they were I thought they were taking the L. I picked them. I picked them to lose this past mm-hmm. weekend. And I had it up until 10 seconds left in the game. When it was a brilliant block, and you know maybe we call, well maybe we have Coach Westoff on again and find out what happened on that play. You know, it's, Coach, we'd love to have you back on. Chanal gets through, and who I think is probably the best linebacker in the league, and blocks it. And it was just like you know without without hesitation, they were pretty. They looked pretty. They seemed pretty confident, even lining up for the field goal. You kind of felt an uneasiness, like wow, are they really gonna win this game? Yeah. Are they really going to beat Kansas City in Kansas City? And then may And then there. no. And then no. no. But you know this, this is the you will not This is the growing pains of, of a team that we didn't expect to do that much. You know, like you, you had enough. Like it was there and will and will Lutz is a cup as a competent kicker. Like he is. Yeah. So it's one of those things you chalk it up to execution. Like the Chiefs made a play, and that's exactly what you need to do. That's what they noticed a chink in the armor. They noticed a chink in the armor that you know one of the guys was not lining up properly, and they felt like they can run right through him. And that's exactly what they. Did. That's what you have to do. You have to, but that goes back to scouting. That goes back to your meetings. That goes back to the, the attention to de- detail that comes from the head down. That is the culture that we talked about with the Chiefs. You need to have that level of attention to detail because that's the difference between nine and zero and momentum going into Orchard Park or eight and one, and now there's a sense of vulnerability there. But I don't. I don't listen. I don't want to put this into existence, and I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on the Chiefs, but these are the kinds of things that they get you to the playoffs. And they get you to host a playoff game, but then it's that one game where it just all falls apart, mm-hmm. right? It just, that's the way it feels with me. It's like, you know, they're winning these close games and, oh, we blocked a punt and, oh, we won by one, oh, we won by five. And then all of a sudden you get into a playoff game at home against an opponent that's hungrier, that's more determined, that hasn't had everything fall their way all season. And they pull the upset. And you're left with your jaw down like, how the fuck did we just lose by two touchdowns to like the Bengals or the Dolphins? Or, you know, just it's just that's football. That's football. So I'm not trying to speak that into existence, but it definitely feels like that's something that could be on the horizon for the Kansas City. No, you're absolutely right. And that, that like you said, that's football. But it's one of those things that with the extended run that they've been on, they've had their fair share of adversity. So it's not one of those situations where, you know, I I liken it to the Eagles. The Eagles are smug, they're brash, they're cocky, and then once Vita Vea stopped the tush push, it was, that's all she wrote. 
right? And that that was it. They packed it in in that game. Like once they once somebody had an answer for them. But here's the thing with Andy Reid. You think you have the answers, he changes the question. Like he's very he's brilliant offensively. He's we have we haven't seen, we haven't scraped the surface of what Andy Reid's got in that playbook. Right? He hasn't really been goofing around. Last year, last year was the year that they might have gotten picked off because they were doing like that snowflake huddle, that snow globe huddle. They were just fucking around. And, and this year they're not fucking around. With the Lions or the Lions. Oh, they're just straight mauling people. That's what that's what the Lions do. And they've taken but good point. They've taken on the personality of their coach. Dan Campbell will fuck you up. He looks like he'll beat the shit out of you. And, I'll bite off your kneecap. I'll, I'll, and then I'll stick it down your throat. But that's what, you know, but t- attitude reflects leadership, as they said in uh, Remember the Titans. And it's absolutely right. But over to the NFC, we, the aforementioned Lions overcame a 23-7 deficit at halftime and five Jared Goff picks. Yeah, my MVP. Yeah, that that is really looking great. Thanks, Jared. But they won. They knocked off the Texans. We had questions about the Lions' ability to win away from from home at Ford Field, but those questions were answered in resounding fashion. Has Detroit cemented themselves as the team to beat in the NFC? Well, they definitely showed some resilience. Um, I I didn't like I didn't like the game plan they had. I didn't like the way Goff played. I mean. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, you went, like, the last, what, five weeks without the ball hitting the ground. Like, very rarely throwing incompletions, and you throw five picks in this game? Um, I didn't like how they got away from the run game. Not enough Jameer Gibbs. Probably too much Montgomery. I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like, uh, Jameson got involved enough. Um, I'm on St. Brown is is a beast. Laporter got hurt. They they had to rely on him because you know everything else was was failing on them. I, I you know they're the they're the happy story. They're the Cinderella story. It's like you know it's really lining up for it to be the Lions, right? And the Chiefs. I feel like that's where we're. That's where we're kind of heading to, so I want to say that I, I, you know, I, I don't want to jump off that, but at the same time, you can't play that way, um, against the Texans who have been struggling. Yeah. Like they've been really, really struggling, and it just makes me worried that a team like the Lions could get beat by a healthy Buccaneers team by a really good Arizona team, you know, uh, and a division opponent like the Packers. So while I do still see them as the favorite, I'm not, their cement is still dry. How about that? It's not solid yet. It's been poured. It's, you know, been laid out. They're, they're, they're stuck in position in it, but uh, someone could still knock them off of the top of the mountain there. Eh, I mean, the, the NFC is weak this year. It's pretty weak, especially since the Niners have kind of taken a step back with all the injuries. The Bucks, you said healthy, right? Well, when healthy, they may get Evans back. They're aiming to get Evans back, but yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be hard press this year. The Vikings don't scare anybody anymore. They almost lost to Mac fucking Jones and the the Jaguars. The Packers, the, the Packers are formidable, but I, I don't think they're as good. The Eagles, meh. The Falcons, meh. And like you mentioned, the Cardinals, they're okay. They're okay. I mean, shit. 
You really, you really think the Cardinals are okay? I think James Conner's having a great year. Kyler Murray looks really good. I mean, defensively, they probably could be better. The Spellman Falcons from 2002 could have looked great against the Jets this weekend. You guys could have put a 50. 50. You could have put a 50 burger on that shit show that was the Jets. Come on now. Let, let's. They're just okay. <laughs> but uh, even and the commies, the, the commies took a bad L, but they're a decent team. I got to say, like of the bunch, like the, the Lions do stand out. They stand head and shoulders above the rest right now. It was an ugly game, completely dog shit game from Jared Goff and inexcusable game. But you talked about we talked about resolve. Steely resolve. Do champions have it? Champions do have it. And in this case, this team, they take on the attitude of their coach. They did not. They did, they could have packed it in. They didn't. Not only did they not pack it in, they shut out the Texans in the second half. They shut them out. And they knew that confidence that we were talking about. That they knew exactly what they need to do they executed it and they walked away with the w does it scare you absolutely it scares you because if jared goff has this performance in the playoffs they're going home 100 percent, they are and right against against the wrong opponent you're not you're not gonna get back into the game you're not gonna be even that many no opponents. absolutely not and that comes back to the running game you gotta get you got to get Gibbs going. 19 for 71 ain't doing it. 12 for 32 for Montgomery ain't doing it. You need more. You need to. Yeah, I would like. I'd like to see them when when they're in trouble. I'd like to see them turn to Gibbs more. Like turn Montgomery off. Like we need our younger back to torch these guys. I mean, that's what we need. And then Montgomery could be your goal line guy if you get down there. But I think you, your game plan is fine if you want to have balance between the two backs. But when you're in trouble, you got to go with the stud. The stud is yeah. Gibbs, not Montgomery. No, you're absolutely right. Like Gibbs brings that intangible. Montgomery is good. He's a good running back. He's a good handcuff for Gibbs. And that's why they're Sonic and Knuckles. But you need more out of St. Brown. Six for 60 and a touchdown? Eh, eh, eh. Three for 53 for Jamison Williams. You need more. You need more from them. And they were able to scratch, fight, and claw back into it. So, like, that's the moxie you need. That's the resolve you need. And they did what they needed to do. But you have to be a little concerned. You have to be a little concerned. But at the end of the day, if this was the N- if this was the AFC, I would be way more concerned. That was that was about a s- five and a half six on a scale. That's not that. It's okay. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna. I, I may lose a little sleep over it. I may be a little agitated. But wait, explain your. So one is not con- not concerned at all. Teton is. I'm lighting my hair on fire. And I'm at a six. six. I'm like ah, okay. That's not. That's a little troublesome. A little troublesome. Some things that we can we can correct. They they draw the Jags next week, right? They draw yeah. they draw the Colts after that. The Bears. That's a get. That's a get yeah. right game. Or is that a trap game? Is that a trap game? Or is it a get right? Is game? Mac Jones playing? Is question? Or are you talking about the Colts? Yes. Mac oh, that's all. No, no. There's there's no the the trap is set. That that's the Jags. The trap is for Doug Peterson. Um, the Colts, are they starting, are they going to start Richardson? Are they gonna, I know they said they were going to start Flacco for the rest of the year, but yeah, I think at some point they're going to bottom out and Richardson's going to get the play. Wait, wait. So if, if J- against the Jaguars, you're saying it's not a trap game, it's a get right game. It's a get right game. They're going to beat the snot out of the Lions, or the, or the Jaguars rather. The Lions are going to beat the shit out of them. And you have the Colts, you have the Bears who are floundering. We'll talk about them in a second. December 5th against the Packers. Okay, now you have my attention. If they do what they did against the Texans, against the Packers, they're losing. The week after that, they play the Buffalo Bills. 
if they do that, they're going. Oh, they're definitely going to lose because that could be a potential Super Bowl matchup. Same thing, you know. Sunday night, that was a potential Super Bowl matchup. It's still possible. Then you got the Bears again. You have the Niners. The problem with the, te- the, problem with the Texans is they have no dip. Right. No well, you lost Collins. You lost you lost Diggs. Dell, I don't know what the fuck is He's not a one. He's not a one. He's just not a one. Mechie came in, you know. Like, good for... They took him all those years ago. He had, you know, he had his... Um, he had cancer, and now he seems to be like finally like working his way into the plan, which is great because he he's a fine football player. Before you know, he started dealing with his health issues, and then to round out their schedule, they have the Niners, and then they have the Vikings. So who could be playing for a playoff spot? So the Vikings might are definitely going to give them their best shot. So. Any of those teams, with the exception of the Jaguars and the Colts, you give you give a B performance. And I, you know that's a B performance from the team. That's a C my a D plus from Jared Goff. Five picks. Uh, you got. Uh, I'll go D plus. They did throw two touchdowns. A D plus performance from him. You're losing. So that's definitely something you gotta clean up. You can't help but just smile when you see a balloon. Popstarsballoons.com offers spectacular balloon decor for all of life's events, specializing in custom balloon creations and installations for private events, corporate and school functions, photo shoots, brand events, and fundraisers. Led by certified balloon artists, the Popstars Balloon team, shape balloons into custom works of art. Popstar Balloons provides full concept balloon design, build and installation services, as well as pre-assembled decor pieces available for pickup or delivery. Popstar Balloons is a woman-owned, small family business focused on providing professional balloon services using only high-quality, 100% biodegradable natural latex balloons made in the U.S. and Italy. They consistently prioritize the safest use and handling of balloons in a sustainable and responsible manner. Popstars Balloons is located in Westchester County, New York, but likes to party at events throughout New York City, Connecticut, Long Island, and New Jersey. Popstars Balloons can also accommodate balloon decor services for destination events. No event too big, no event too small, and their custom personalization service is the perfect touch. They also offer a full line of event decor options like backdrop, prop rentals, tablescapes, dessert table setups, custom signs, and they always deliver with a smile. Whether you're looking for gift balloons, classic decor, or large-scale design for a big impact, Popstars Balloons will create the perfect decor for your theme, vibe, and space. So if you have an idea in mind or need inspiration, Popstars Balloons decor will be the cutting edge and spectacular. Visit popstarballoons.com to pop your next event. Speaking of cleaning up, I might have to clean house. Yeah. Now, let's go to the other side of that win-loss column. The Jets and Cowboys got their doors blown off. The Bears lost to the Woeful Patriots. The Giants got knocked off by the Panthers in Germany in overtime. So, what team is in the biggest trouble moving forward? Z, you're not going to like my answer here. But I, I'm going to go with the New York Giants. I mean, you're – listen, you're a Giants. Yes. Okay? I am. So w- let me let me ask you some questions. Sure. Okay? So as a, as a mm-hmm. Giant fan, would you prefer to be – have have the Giants problems or would you prefer to have Philadelphia Eagle problems? You, you'd rather be Philly right yeah. now, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you rather be the Washington Commanders right now, or would you rather be the Giants? I'd rather be the Commanders, and I could have been if it wasn't for the Italian. Right. Would you rather be Dallas, or would you rather be the Giants? That's a tough one. Probably rather be the Giants, right? Uh, we'll take the Giants. Well, right? here's the thing, though. You also, I think I'd rather be the Giants than the Cowboys. And, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, would you rather be Detroit or the oh, Giants? Oh, come on now. <laughs> would you rather be Minnesota or the Giants? I'd rather be Minnesota, yeah. Would you rather be Green Bay? Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you rather be Chicago or the Giants? <laughs> Teeth dryer. Chicago has. T- yeah, but talent doesn't. Talent. It, talent doesn't always equate to wins. That. So you'd rather be the Giants. I would. I have a bet. I, I have more trust in Dable and Shane than I do in the brain trust okay. of the Bears. They just fired Shane Waldron, by the way. They just fired their OC. So that's so that's two out of. So eight far, eight. yeah. We're just we're just doing the national. We're just doing okay. the NFC. Would you rather be Atlanta or the Giants? I'd rather be Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta's, you know, that Penix pick isn't looking so bad anymore. Would you rather be Tampa? Or I would rather be Tampa. Tampa's t- Baker. T- Baker's not bad. Okay, would you rather be New Orleans or the Giants? I would. Mm. New Orleans is in cap New hell. Orleans is in cap hell. They s- they have, they have come on. That's, that's what's giving me pause. That's why I'm thinking about this. They have Olave, but Derek Carr. They is had there. Olave. And then Derek Carr happened. Yeah. Derek yes, kills um, I think I would rather be the Giants there because I know Daniel Jones couldn't deliver okay. that ball. That's fair. And Carolina just beat the Giants, but would you rather be the Giants or the Carolina? <sighs> I mean, I had that. I mean, Bryce, Bryce Young has just picked yeah. up two wins, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, and Chuba, so, they have Chuba Hubbard. They extended Chuba Hubbard. Chuba? They, was top five. Statistically, they have the worst defense in the league, and you just lost to them. You lost to them in Munich. In Munich, you know, so um, I think so I would Carol- rather. Would I would rather be. I think I'd rather be Carolina. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So now, ah, oh, the NFC West. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I mean, would you rather? Would you rather be the Cardinals or the Giants? Cardinals. Yeah. 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 Would you rather be San Francisco or the Giants? No, that's a lot. That's loaded. That's pretty loaded. I would rather be San Francisco, meaning that you know I just got, I was in the Super Bowl for Christ's sake. In the Super Bowl, you have a quarterback, you have running backs. I mean, Jordan Mason is a top. I have a wideout who tried to strangle my long snapper. <laughs> you might have a kicking issue. Oh no, I definitely have a kicking Rams. issue. Rams or the Giants? Uh. Okay, I'm. I'm the Ram- You could uh, you could argue that you could trade one of those receivers and really get back some return. You could your defense is middle of the road. Your quarterback is a veteran. I think I'd rather be Although the. Gi- he couldn't throw. He couldn't throw. He couldn't throw a touchdown. This no. past weekend. I definitely. think I'd rather be the Giants. My receivers are okay, better. I mean, you have you have the top two, but the drop off. You have two two Atwell as your number three, and he was your number one for weeks. So I would. And they won when yeah. he was there, but they lost last right. night. So odd. Yeah. Right. So Kyron odd. Williams, I'd rather have him. I mean, Tracy has shown flashes. He needs to hold the ball high and tight. We know this. Singletary, like, you were, you were texting me as the game was going on. Why aren't you going to Singletary there? Like, Tracy's taking the job. He's the he's the, he's become the short yardage guy. But, um, yeah, I, I got to argue that um, Kyron Williams is still, you know, he, he's a better option at this moment. But the Giants have are the top team in sacks right they can't stop a run to save their lives but they get after the quarterback and that's something that's lacking with the rams because you know mr donald is actually in the stands instead of on the field and then would you rather be seattle or the giants seattle seems to be in a little bit of turmoil right now i really you know they have talent they have they have three wide they have talent they got gino they have they have a capable quarterback. Yeah. They have two capable running backs. Offensively, they seem like they're they're okay. And, and defense, they weren't terrible. They just released their start their starting linebacker, released the team in tackles. I think that's odd. But so, would you rather? Which one would you rather? Use? I I probably have to go with Seahawks. So there. So out of out of the uh, sixteen teams in the NFC. There is only four <laughs> that that are are worse off than the Giants. So yeah, I think that I think that situation is pretty bad. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, the owner has already said that Dayball and and Shane are coming back. I uh, just don't know where you go from here. I know you have to start over at quarterback, but I don't know if Dayball should be calling the plays next year. I just Z, I don't understand the offense. Why are we running the ball with Daniel Jones? Like, why is that a play in our playbook? Why are we doing fake handoff and running an option and running and running up the right sideline? Why are we quarterback drawn? I don't understand. There's Malik Neighbors. Wandale Robinson is a good player. Slayton is a good player. Tracy's a decent running back. Why can't we get these guys the ball? Is it Daniel can't get them the ball? Like, I just don't understand. What Do you know what's going on? It is that Daniel can't get them the ball. We saw Terod Taylor do it before he got hurt, and then we saw Tommy DeVito do it. So if Tommy DeVito can do it, anybody can fucking do it. Tommy DeVito's cutting cold cuts right now. Like, he's at the friggin' deli in his... You know. Tommy Cutler. Exactly. Baby. Yeah. So if those guys can deliver the ball and deliver victories, why the hell can't Daniel Jones? It's the same shit offensive line. It was the same offensive line. Is that is that is that on Daniel? Is it on Dable? Is it on Shane? Like, where did this go wrong? <laughs> it's on Dave it. Gettleman. It's on Dave fucking Gettleman. But isn't But dude, isn't, dude, dude, they're coaching wait. him like they didn't they're coaching him like Jeff Fisher coached Jared Goff. They didn't want it. They they were it wasn't his guy. Dable was brought in under the auspices that, hey, I coach Josh Allen. If this guy can be half of what Josh Allen is, we're going to be all right. And he was. He 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 running was. those Josh Allen designed running yeah. It's the Buffalo offense. He's running the Buffalo offense. Now, in his first year, when Dayball still had his balls and he still coached with his balls, like they, you saw it. There were flashes of it. Right? And then it's slowly but surely eroded. And now this is what we have. So it's a combination of two. But I think the writing's on the wall and it's Daniel Jones. I I think it's... But isn't it... I mean, I understand what you're saying. They they don't don't want him, right? But they had a decision to make in this offseason if they were going to start over at running back or if they're going to start over at quarterback. And I watched the Hard Knock show and it was, we're going to build around Daniel and we're going to develop Daniel. That's why I feel like the issue is, is they haven't developed him. Like he came in and if you remember, he played well, there was a season where he did play well and we haven't, there's been no growth. There's been no development. It's like he had that one good season where he played well and time stopped. He didn't develop. He didn't get better at, you know, when 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 they went into their offseason meetings, you know, it's uh, it feels like they're like, Daniel, you're doing great. Keep up the good work. It wasn't like, well, Daniel, you need to work on, you know, throwing the the left out, you know, off from the right ash. Or you need to work on, you know, uh, looking, looking the safety off. You need to be better at not running the football, but hitting guys in the chest with the football. Like, it seems like they're, the development just stopped at some point. Yeah, no, that, that is fair. Between year one and year two, uh, under Dayball. That's yeah. it. That, that's yeah. the line of demarcation. And, 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 if you look at, and if you look at Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen was the opposite, mm-hmm. right? It's he came in playing like shit, yes. right? And we saw him always running the ball, right? And now there's a mat- he's matured where he realizes, I need to throw it. I need to throw it away. I need to hand the ball off. I need to, you know, there seemed to be more development with Josh Allen and no development with Daniel Jones. And I think at some point, Daniel Jones is probably a better athlete than Josh Allen, but that's not the case anymore. No, I... I, I... At some point, you just have to kind of cut bait with him. And the problem is they double down. But you understand why they did it? Because the running back position has become so devalued. Daniel Jones did have those glimpses, those flashes. 
I understand. I don't condone it. Like any reasonable fan, any reasonable person could tell you that that ain't it, Chief. But <laughs> when you're looking at it, but when you think about well, it, well, I'm just looking at the draft, right? Like he went after Devin White, but before Josh Hines Allen, Hawkinson, Ed Oliver, Devin Bush, Jonah Williams, Christian Wilkins, the late Dwayne Haskins, Brian Burns, Brian Burns. <laughs> they could have got Brian Burns. They ended up with Brian Burns anyway. So they could have gotten Brian Burns. And one pick later was Dexter Lawrence. Right? Now you're looking at like the next quarterback taken after Daniel Jones. Still going. Oh, they could have had Debo at 36. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. Ryan Finley at 104. If I'm unless I miss somebody. But I got a signed auto. Oh no. Oh no, your boy Drew Locke at 42. I missed him. So there you go. Who is a giant? Who is a giant? What the fuck? <laughs> what the actual fuck could just draft these guys? But you know, that was a bad that was a bad quarterback group. Kyler Murray went number one that year. But I gotta say, like, some of it is on coaching staff, some of it is on the GM, but Daniel Jones needs to take some ownership in what he has done and what he has not done. Now, for me, the worst situation, the worst of the bunch, it's gotta be Dallas, man. I'm sorry. Like, Dallas, like, this, you're a perennial contender, you're always so hyped, you had Dak, you had CD, you're losing all these guys. Now, Dak's done. You have an opportunity to, to evaluate Trey Lance. This is your time to actually do that. But no, you're going to roll out Cooper Rush again. For what? For what? What are you doing? What, what are you holding steady for? There's nothing to hold steady about. You're overrated, overstated. Micah Parsons is turning on Mike McCarthy. As usual, that that train's never late. Mike McCarthy's the problem. Maybe Mike McCarthy's not the problem. Maybe, just maybe, it's not. But it's a circus. It's been a fucking circus. It'll continue to be a fucking circus. At least the Giants. It's more of like pitiful. It's not comical. With the Cowboys, it's comical. From a schadenfreude standpoint. Like, you know what's going to happen. This is what Jerry Jones does. Inevitably, this is what's going to happen. And this team always seems to have aspirations. At what, I have no idea. But the, huh. between the, you, and, you and I... So you would say Mark, Mike McCarthy's gone? He's gone. He Has Dak played his last game? I think so. But the problem is, is that what gives me pause about that is that they refuse to evaluate Trey Lance. What the hell? Why'd you trade for him then? Why'd you trade for him? Z, Z, he might be that bad. He might just be that bad. Uh, Yeah, but you know. I mean, he played a little bit in the game and it was just like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, but he he didn't get that much at North Dakota State. He didn't get anything with the Niners. He's not getting anything with the Cowboys. You talked about development. Daniel Jones has at least gotten his ass off the bench and he's played. When Trey Lance needs to play. Trey Lance probably hasn't played since that year in North Dakota State. Still got paid. Yeah. Is it about money or is it about playing? Like what what's it about? You know? I mean at some point. At some point, he wants to play, right? I mean, everybody wants to be... Everybody who signs up to be a quarterback, everybody who takes that job, eventually wants to play. Like, everybody, even, like, Clipboard Jesus. I'm sure Charlie Whitehurst wanted to play, but he was much better served holding that clipboard and having that sweet-ass beard. (laughs) Like... 
you feel like Ch- Chase Daniel. I'm sure Chase Daniel would love to have played more in his career. We, I mean, we don't know. <laughs> that, that's bothersome to me. Like, they could be sitting on a really good quarterback. But they refused to let him take his lumps. Let him. Gr- they did it with Troy Aikman. They let Troy Aikman get the shit beat out of him. They let him learn on the job. Why is this kid not good enough to learn on the job? That Cooper Rush is there. Like, you're overrated, overstated, and it's always... Like, that's what you're going to be. The Jets, I don't even dignify their response anymore. There's a special level of hell for the Jets. <laughs> I don't dignify with the response. Like, I, I, I'm just, I'm done with the Jets. I, I'm done with the fucking Jets. Bart Scott was done for the Jets on Sunday. Steve Gelbs, you know, Willie Colon. They, that, I am now watching the Jets just to see the post game on SNY. Because that's good. The post game is better than the game. Who does it recently? No, it's um Connor, I think Connor Hughes, Gary, uh, Steve Gelbs, Willie Colon, and Bart Scott. Really good. Really good. And you know Bart, Bart Scott doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Bart Scott will just go in. And and the Bears, the Bears, I think, are in the best situation because they're already acknowledging and they're making changes. This guy Waldron sucks. Get rid of him. All right. Eberflus. I would start packing my things too and just leave them in a box when you inevitably get that call. But like you said, they, they're they loaded for bear with talent. Talent doesn't always win out. So, you know, Caleb Williams clearly is frustrated. Clearly he's kind of punch drunk at this point. He's getting the crap kicked out of him just like Justin Fields. So... Kudos to the Bears for at least acknowledging there's a problem, but <laughs> that's admit that's the first step is admitting there's a problem. So you're right. Yeah. That's right. so there you go. And speaking of problems, moving over to basketball, where the injury bug has bitten several big names: Chet Holmgren, Zion Williamson, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Jimmy Butler, and John Morant are down and out. Holmgren, being the most severe, he fractured his pelvis. So, in your opinion, which injury is the most impactful? Hmm. Hmm. I am going to say... Well, Anthony Davis is back. I heard he's I heard he's coming back. He's not missing any time. I would say John ja Morant really is what makes that team go. Right? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, Chet Holmgren seems like they're done. Uh, it seems like he's done. I mean, he's going to be reevaluated. In a couple of weeks. Eight to like, ten. Elvis? Yeah. How about this? How about how about Oklahoma City should get on the phone with the Bucks? Hmm. Right. And be like, hey, listen, we got draft picks. Give us Giannis. Interesting. What do you think of that? I also think, hear me out, hear me out. I think another team that should get in on Giannis, the new the the Brooklyn Nets. Really? They're good. Like the Nets are good. They're a playing team. They've got draft picks up the ass. They've got a ton of draft picks. Call Milwaukee. Like, hey, listen. We'll give you Whatever draft picks you want, give us Giannis. Because it's the start over in Milwaukee, right? The start over. It's not worth it. You're 2 and 8. You ain't turning this shit around, guys. Like, this is a carryover from last year. Dame and Giannis don't work. Trade them now. Giannis, send them to, to the Nets. Dame, where you want to go, brother? You want to go to Miami now? You can go to Miami now. You want me to take Giannis? You're taking Ben Simmons off my hands. Exactly. 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 We'll give you all the draft picks you want, but you got to take Ben. <laughs> you have Deal. to take Ben. Deal. <laughs> Would yeah. you? And if you're Milwaukee, you you like, hey, Giannis, thank you. We won a championship. You We fired a really good coach. You son of a bitch. We brought in the, play, we brought in the player you, you wanted. You son of a bitch. It's not working. 
I'll kill you. <laughs> I will kill you. Right? And it's, it's just like, listen, thank you for the championship. We tried it your way. Fail. Fail. You're going to Brooklyn. Now, if you're Giannis, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to Brooklyn? Do you want to go to Oklahoma City? Do you want to go to Golden State? See, I don't think Golden State has the capital. They don't have the draft picks to make the deal. The Thunder can make anything work. The Thunder could do whatever they, they want, man. The, oh, another team that could do it is Houston. Yeah. Houston has draft picks. And they're not bad, too. They're not. They're. I mean, they're... They're two years away from me and two years yeah, away. But they're accumulating, right? they're stockpiling talent. An infusion of a guy like Giannis changes things. In, in, in Houston. Houston. It changes things. It yeah. accelerates the yeah, timeline. The, only pro- the problem with Houston, though, is I think they locked up some of their <laughs> players for too long. Like, I think they they made some stupid mistakes by signing guys to, to some long-term, not long-term, but longer contracts than they should have. I don't know. We'll, we'll, it, put yourself in Giannis' shoes. Where do you want to go? And then put yourself in Milwaukee. Put yourself in, you know, Milwaukee's shoes. Where what trade? What trade makes sense to you? I think I think Brooklyn. Brooklyn would be great, except that he's going to come and to- and he's going to torture me for the the remainder of his deal because he's you sent him in conference. If you are going to, the, the, the Knicks don't have it either. They, the Knicks don't have the. They don't have the draft picks. They, don't they just dealt for towns. They just dealt for bridges. They're they're done making trades right now. The next ones they're gonna get are, are the guys that are gonna be the glue to hold this team together. So like they're gonna be like the role players. So I really don't think that that's gonna be a big one. But um, if I was Milwaukee, Houston would appeal to me because I can probably get some a couple young players, maybe some picks. I can I can work I can work with that. I mean, the Ben Simmons thing makes too much sense, but then he's in conference. That's what bothers me. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Oklahoma City, they can call their shot. The problem is, is that, is he going to mesh with SGA? Is he going to come in and say, this is my team now? No, no, motherfucker. This is my team. This is, this is mine. All of this is mine. Mine. All of this is mine. Like, you didn't build anything. I built this. We built this. You, we built this. You're a mercenary. You're a fucking merc at this point in your life. So start acting like. But in terms of in terms of impact, like they already have, they're missing Hartenstein too. I gotta say Holmgren. Like Chet Holmgren being out is a problem. Like he's a he's a major factor. Right, he, he's a, a key cog in that. I mean, we've seen what the Grizzlies can do without John Morant. We saw a lot of it last year. So it's one of those things that, yeah, he's averaging twenty and nine this year, but nine. and that he's nine. inevitably inevitably going to miss time because he's going to do some stupid. So what's the point? Never, you know, never. Zion's always hurt, so that train's never late. Anthony Davis is always hurt, that train's never late. I don't expect anything of the of the Suns. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. And a healthy Durant, like, this is this is fine. Treat it like a vacation. You know? It, he'll come back. He's older. They're going to need... The, the Thunder are going to need a guy like Chet Holmgren to offset, offset F, SGA, right? They're going to need more firepower. Now, they, they, have a, they have a very good team. But it took off when Chet Holmgren got there. Right, he sat out the the rookie year because of injury. Took off last year. They need him. It's clear as day that they need him. Now, can they can they get by without him? Yeah, they can get by. They absolutely can. The one thing that they have in their favor is that they have they're loaded for bear. Their war chest can go buy them another player. Whether it's Giannis or whoever, take your pick. Right? That that's the beauty part of what Sam Presti's done. Is that he set this is like generational wealth, man. They're they're good for a while. Or they can turn around and sell it all. They can go full LA Rams. They can go fuck them picks. 
They can go full on Sne- West Sneed. They they can go full on Sneed and just go all in. But Holmgren is definitely going to be the guy, and a fractured pelvis. You figure <laughs> he's eight. About yeah, rehab. yeah, rehab. he's eight to ten from being evaluated. You're look right. right. He's 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 eight for eight to ten before they can even say, "Hey, let's look at." This guy can't even take a shit. When right, I mean, he can't push when he shits. That's a problem. You, you have to be able to push when you shit. So. And you're not having sex. You can't. No, yeah. no, poor Chet. Poor Chet you can't play basketball. That's that's off the table. There, there's a lot of there are a lot of things that are off the table right now for Chet Holmgren, but um. Yeah, like that. That's a lot. That's a lot for him. But um, <laughs> the one saving grace, you know, is that they'll be prepared. I mean, shit. If they got Giannis, that would be a game changer right there. That would be very, very intriguing. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's we'll watch that space and see if there are any if there's any movement on that front. Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much. With FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their graphic tees, hoodies, snapbacks, accessories, and more. Go to fckclout.com today and check out current season and past season merchandise for men and women. Get it while you can. That's fckclout.com. Check them out today. FCKCloud.com The Wheel Route Alright boys and girls, The Wheel is back. And we are doing a special edition of the Wheel Round for the MLB Awards that will be announced next week. You ready, D? All right. Spin this wheel. All right. Rookies of the Year. Who are your Rookies of the Year D. All right, so I have it in the National League. I got Paul Skeens taking the rookie of the year, 1.96 ERA, pitch, starting pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, it's only 23 starts, but, I mean, he was just nasty. I mean, it was the eye test there, Z. And then uh, in the American League, ha, you know what? I'm going to go with Luis Gill. Um or heel. Heel. They like to call it yeah. heel. 3.50 ERA, 26.8% strikeout rate. That's pretty impressive. So those are that's who I'm going with there. What do you got? Uh, those are solid choices. I mean, Skeens and Heel already won the Baseball Digest Awards. So we're going to see where they go. Now, the nominees, the finalists, are interesting because you have... Two Yankees. You have Heel, and then you have Austin Wells, and then you have Kowser from Austin Wells is the yeah Austin Wells is the other is the other uh, nominee yeah. So you're looking at Kowser, you're looking at Wells, and you're looking at yeah, looking at Luis Heel, which makes me think now Luis Heel had a dominant year, right? He had a dominant April and May, a little bit of June, then he started to fade a little bit. Wells. Uh, he was all right. And then Kowser was merely okay as well. This feels like it's Luis Heels to win. Now, conventional wisdom says that the Yankees split the vote and Kowser wins. Just from the base, uh, just from the number standpoint. Now, it's got to be Paul Skeets. <laughs> I mean, the dude is a freaking meteor. He was an absolute <laughs> meteor this year. But, you know, stranger things have happened. But um, it's kind of hard to discount what you said. Not to mention, what other rookie you know after, like, nine starts 
ends up starting the All Star game. They well, I was. Not. I know you weren't, but you know what? It was he was a meteor. He was a phenomenon. He yeah. was. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're but then you're looking at Jackson Merrill, Jackson Churio, all, both very, both very worthy candidates, and would win if they weren't going up against a guy like Paul Skeens. Either one of them would have a really good chance. The problem is, is that they're running up against a buzzsaw. But if I, if you were to, if you were to kind of pick a dark horse of the two, you probably have to go with Merrill. Merrill had a, is a, had a better year. So I don't think it's going to happen, but stranger things have indeed happened. All right. Spin that wheel one more time. Manager of the year. Who are your managers of the year? Yeah, so, I mean, in the American League, I'm going to go with A.J. Hinch. I mean, he got the Tigers to the playoffs, even though it's bullshit how he got them to the playoffs. He still got them to the playoffs. Um... He's still a really good manager. I mean, he won the World Series with Houston. He's shown that he can manage. It's not a fluke. So uh, I'm going with A.J. Hinch. And in the National League, I'm going to go with your boy. I'm going to go with Carlos Mendoza. Aside from, you know, all the shit I, I talk, I mean, he still he still did the job. He got them into the National League Championship Series. Um, and, you know, he's a Yankee, but he's, he's a Met now, and... Some of the stuff he brought over is working, and I I think he deserves it. Well, we're in agreement on that. Now, he's going up against formidable competition. He's going up against Pat Murphy of the Brewers. He's also going up against Schilt from the Padres. So you absolutely, you know, any one of those three, it's a lot like the rookie of the year race. Any of them could win. I think when you look at the season in totality from where the Mets were to where the Mets ended from 0-5 to OMG, like Gary Cohen said, you have to take the way that he managed this and how he navigated the scenario. Carlos Mendoza has done a fantastic job. And for that, he absolutely... Deserves his kudos. They played their hearts they out. They do. They play for him. Absolutely, they do. Now, AJ Hinch maximized. For, he, he maximized the potential of that team. Right? They had a bunch of kids. They jettisoned Javi Baez. They bring in a bunch of friggin' AAA players up, and they get on an equatorially hot run. Quatraro from Kansas City and Stephen Vogt of Cleveland are the other two nominees. And it's interesting. It's a good thing it's not a postseason award, right? It's a good thing it's just for the regular season because nobody acquitted themselves well coming out of the American League Central in the postseason. I got to go with Matt Quattraro. Like, as good a job as Steven Vogt did, as good of a job as A.J. Hinch did, I think that the expectations of the Royals were lower. I really think, I mean, AJ Hinch isn't going to get the manager of the year job off of, you know, he's not going to get that award off of two hot months. No way. Absolutely not. Now, as, as good as it was, it was still only a couple hot months. The, the Tigers were kind of hovering for a while. Cleveland went wire to wire, so that gives you a little bit of that gives you a, a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. That gives you a little bit of pause. But for expectations, you know, you, you take a flyer on Seth Lugo. You take a flyer on Michael Wonka. You expect to trade these guys because you're in fucking fourth place. You know? And not only do you not end up in fourth place, but you make the playoffs. Playoffs? You kidding me? You yeah. kidding me? So, do you feel like... Do you feel like... Um... Bobby Witt Jr. might be entering into Mike Trout land? Um, possibly. I, I think it's too early. And the team is actually good around him. 
So that, um, I think that's the only thing that's really giving me a little bit of pause on that. Because they, they're not just throwing money at the problem. They're actually developing players. They have Pasquatino. They have a bunch, they've, I mean, they still have Salvi, the ghost of Salvi Perez, the rotting corpse of Salvi Perez. But, you know, they still have plenty there. And I think they're going to be good for a while. The problem with the Angels is that they always threw money at the problem, and it never gelled. You don't even know what the problem is. What's the problem? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? What, what are we doing here? We all know what the problem is, Billy. Okay, great. What's the problem? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> he gets on base. You're trying to replace Yami. We can't do that. <laughs> There's a good team. There's 50 feet of crap. And then there's us. So that's exactly what's going on. All right. Let's roll it again. See where we end up. Cy Young. Who are, who's taking home your Cy Young awards? Well, in the National League, I'm going with my guy, Chris Sale. Just dominated this year. I mean... 35 years old, veteran, 18 wins, 2.38 ERA. Listen, Skeen's got the start in the All-Star game. He gets the Cy Young Award. We wasted his year. I hope he comes back and does as well as he did this past season. Um, in the American League, I'm going with Tarek Skubal. Um, AL Triple Crown, right? He had wins, ERA, and strikeouts. I'm not giving it to Class A. I'm not giving it to a closer. I'm not giving it to Seth Lugo with the fucking Royals. Giving it to Tarek Skubu, who played on a shitty Tiger team, and got them into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I love Seth Lugo for what he did when he was a Met. He he really, <laughs> he stuck it up the Mets' ass. They said, oh no, you're only a reliever. Okay, like he's gone and made himself into a, a viable starter. Yeah, he pitched to an even 3 ERA and had a 1.09 whip. Sorry, that's not Cy Young. Sorry, Charlie. Adios, muchacho. And Sorry, Emmanuel Classe, the argument can be made because he had 47 saves and he had a .61 ERA. It's a regular season award. That's the one thing. Like, I, he was the best closer in the league for one of the best bullpens in the league. And then he shit the bed in the playoffs. But then th- that's... Don't, yeah, badly, yeah. badly. Badly. Yeah. Badly. Yeah. Uh, I'm not discounting that. I'm not discounting that at all. But when you're running up against the guy who led the league in wins, who led the league in ERA, who led the league, the major leagues in strikeouts, not just the American League, he led the, the major leagues in strikeouts, it's hard to say that it's not Tarek Schoolballs to win. Right? But Classe is probably going to finish in second. He may even poach some first place votes. He was the classe of the closers this year. He was the head of the classe. I'll see myself out. But you're looking at Wheeler had a great ERA, had an, a .96 whip. Yeah, that's it. Everything else goes in Chris Sale's favor, right? Everything else. You're looking at, you know, 18 wins, 238 ERA, 225 strikeouts, but no, <laughs> there is absolutely no reason that Chris Sale does not win the Cy Young Award this year unless they're going to trip over themselves to give it to Skeens, which he he had 100 fewer innings. Like, come on now. Like, OK, so now Chris Sale had 177 two thirds innings like Skeens had 133. Like the some like Zach Wheeler pitched over 200. He, he pitched 200 flat. Like, come on now. Like, can we not? Can, can we just... Yeah, Seth Lugo, 206. Right? Scooble, you're looking at... Over 200. So... There, there's something to be said for that. Like, don't... He didn't pitch in April. He, he, he Give him Rookie of the Year. Rookie, year, rookie of the Year is enough. You don't need to lump skeins in there when Chris Sale had the vastly superior year. All right, one last spin. The one we've all been waiting for, 
MVP. Who you got? I mean, this one's kind of easy, right? I mean, I can't. You have to give it to Otani in the National League. 50 50 guy. Um, just, a, just a monster all season. And you have to give it to the Judges of the American League. Judges OPS was 1.159, highest by any player in 20 years. Last person who had that high was Barry Bonds. That's fair. Now, Otani was a 50 50 guy. Absolutely. But on that team, definition of valuable again. They added Otani, and were they that much better than they were? Eh, not really. Well, they did win. Well, they did. They did win the World Series. <laughs> and what? And what did he do? They, they could have got. They they could have got somebody else to hit one something in the playoffs. He got them. Yeah, got them there. You got them there. You remove... They don't get there without him. But you remove him from that team. They're still good. Right? You remove him from that lineup. It's still really good. That's you true. remove Francisco Lindor from the Mets lineup. And you... How many times have you said it? Uh, Definition of valuable. It's Francisco Lindor. But best player award, which is what the MVP is... It's Otani. So Otani's going to win. However, in terms of value, val- Otani's value lies in his ability to pitch and hit. So you can give him the award every fucking year. It's LeBron all over again. It's that LeBron award. So if the, if there was a year when they were going to back off of that, it would be this year. Because of what Lindor did. Cattell Marte, like, they just needed a third person. It feels it feels like oh just pick a random person. Okay. Oh, Ketel Marte. Okay. He so, set the he set career highs in homers and ribbies. 36 homers, 95 ribbies. Good for you, I guess. Nice job, I guess. Solid numbers, but you're running up against Otani and Lindor. That's a distant third. Somebody will be a funny fuck and, and vote him a fir- somebody will give him a first place vote. <laughs> Say some, <laughs> you fucking clown! What are you doing? And that brings us to the American League. I mean, obviously, Judge had the monster year, but it goes back to again. Judge and Soto split. There's a possibility that Bobby Witt Jr. wins. It depends on how they do it, but you really can't argue with what Aaron Judge did this year. But the numbers and the fact that he has a teammate there, it bears out that it could split the vote. But you, you don't do what Aaron Judge does, right? You you don't... You, you don't invoke the name Barry Bonds. You just don't. I mean, he only hit 58 homers this year. Only, only 58. Excuse me. Only 58. My God. Well, he must have been sick. (laughs) But, you know, this is a monstrous year. But there is a weird pathway. Just like we said, there's a weird pathway for Kowser. There's a weird pathway for Bobby Witt Jr. So I don't think it's Soto. It's either going to be Bobby Witt or it's going to be Aaron Judge. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if they if they pulled a little sneaky and Bobby Witt ends up getting this thing. But watch this space. We're going to hear the announced the awards announced next week. Our picks are locked in. Hit us up with yours. Fade route mail at gmail.com. Slide in our DMs on IG at Fade Route Podcast or drop slide an X at Fade Route DNZ and let us know who you're picking for the MLB awards. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today and check out our releases in apparel, accessories, drinkware, and more. Ever wanted an alleged superstar t-shirt? We got those. You want some yoga pants? We got those too. And we're not done yet. 
we have a lot of exciting collaborations and new products on the way. But check out what we have now at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ.com. Who's the best of the worst this week in sports? The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our X account at Fade Route DNZ and our Instagram account at Fade Route Podcast, and you vote. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this here show and takes home the coveted ass trophy. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week? D. Derek Carr. That trying guy. to murder your teammate. <laughs> what the fuck, Derek? How many times are you going to try and kill somebody? Poor, poor Chris Olave. Poor Chris Olave. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for Legend Superstar of the Week? D. All right, so first up, I got Tua. Hmm. Okay? This dude is just coming off of being on IR for a concussion, and he tries to tackle a guy head first after throwing an interception. Ooh. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's just, just, I'm not, I'm just not comfortable watching Tua play professional football. Tua Tonga Viola, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, I've got your boy, Jahir Zahn Newton. Johnny <laughs> Defensive tackle for the Washington Commanders. Fourth and one with the Pakamis boys to get the ball back. And uh-huh. Russell Wilson gets under center. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Gotcha. And that ends the game. Gotcha. Jerzon Newton, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, was this Tyrone Tracy? Oh. Giants force overtime against the terrible Panthers in Munich, Germany. Giants won the toss. Axe for the ball. Things are looking up. And Tyrone Tracy fumbles the ball. On the first play, Panthers recover, kick field goal, game over, have a nice seven-hour ride back over the pond. Ew. Ew. Tyrone Tracy Jr., you are my alleged superstar of the week. What do you got, Z? I mean, good choices. You really can't go wrong. Uh, Pretty soccer heavy this week, but I have to give an honorable mention to the Florida State men's football team. Notre Dame 52, Florida State 3. And you guys got all pissy and sat out because you didn't think you were worthy. <laughs> you you were you wanted to be in the playoff. Playoffs? You're lucky if you get the play fifty-two to three. Get the fuck out of here. What the hell's wrong with you people? I gotta start with Man City. Trying to go for their fifth Premier League title. Trying to stay in it in the Champions League. Well, you're not really doing that good of a job here. You lost in the EFL Cup to Tottenham. Two one. You lost in the EFL. Uh, you lost to Bournemouth in the Premier League 2-1. Bournemouth, who's pretty much like hovering around the relegation zone. You lost in the Champions League 4-1 to Sporting. And then you lost 2-1 to Brighton and Hove Albion on Saturday. Now, you have some time that your next match is against Tottenham again on the 23rd. But this does not look good for Pep Guardiola's staff. You have a lot of changeover. Who knows if Erling Holland is going to stay beyond this season. Kevin De Bruyne. Jack Grealish, you've kind of relegated him to the bench in favor of Jeremy Doku. There's a lot of self-inflicted shit going on right now. 
for a team that wants to win its fifth consecutive. It's a lot of self-inflicted shit there, Pep. So you're going to have to figure some stuff out. And buying a guy at the transfer window isn't going to, like, I don't think it's going to do it this year. So there's got to be some soul searching in Manchester. Man City, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two. We talked about Man City. Let's talk about Tottenham. Well, (laughs) in their most recent match, they lost to Ipswich Town 2-1. That was their first win of the season for the Tractor Boys. They had just came back from relegation, and yeah, that was their first win. Now, I'm just thinking out loud here that uh, perhaps the Ange ball just isn't working. Like, you don't have the playmakers that you have. Like, you know, James Madison's not doing the job. Losing Harry Kane finally bit you in the ass. You know, it's, Son is good, but you, you need more than just him. You need more on that side of the ball. And frankly, you play a high press and... Yeah, those those bad habits will lead to losing, especially to in the tractor boys. You can't lose to a team that hasn't been here probably since, like, what, the Clinton administration? Sounds about right. Tottenham, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And number three, the MLS. Oh, your cash cow is out. Inter-Miami loses to Atlanta. In a best two out of three scenario, a number nine seed goes in and takes it from the number one seed. Not only is that the worst possible outcome, but the point where Don Garber, the commissioner of the MLS, didn't even go to the the match. He was that confident that uh, Miami was going to advance. But this is the, the problem. The growing problem with the MLS is that you put it behind the paywall with Apple TV. You pretty much shoved Inter Miami and Messi down everybody's throat. Now, everybody is actively rooting against your golden goose. Or in this case, your pink goose. You're turning off the diehards for what? For the money grab? I hope you like the money grab because Messi's gone in two years. And then what are you going to do? Right? Luis Suarez, it takes him three days to get ready for a match because his knees are so fucked. Like, yeah, this is what you did. This is what you signed up for. MLS has worked very hard to get, you know, out from under the stigma of being the retirement league. And you just went and did it all over again. Except this time it's it's behind a, a subscription to Apple TV. Do better. Just do better. MLS, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we said our piece. Go to our X account at FaderoutDNZ. Go to our Instagram poll at FaderoutPodcast and vote and vote and vote and vote. And for our nominees. You're better than that. Just do better. Just do better. This has been The Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay fade, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review, rate us five stars, turn on subscription notifications, and share on social media. Tell your friends and spread the word.